the things that I find is very, very easy to dehydrate are potatoes. And I thought today I'd make more of a comprehensive video on dehydrating potatoes because I bought a 15 pound bag of russet potatoes. And guess what I'm doing this weekend? So I'm gonna tell you why you should think about dehydrating, the benefits of dehydrating, how to do it, how to rehydrate, and how to store. And I am going to show you how to make dehydrated potato slices, potato cubes, squares, and potato shreds, and even how to dehydrate it, frozen potatoes straight from the store. So come along. First off, I'm gonna defend the lowly potato. I hear, oh man, I'm dieting, I can't have potatoes, or too many calories. A potato, a medium-sized potato, this is bigger than medium, has 110 calories. That's, you know, just a little bit more than an orange. And it's a great source of vitamin C, magnesium, B6, a whole bunch of other stuff. So why do people think a potato is so high calorie? Well, it depends what you put on it and how you make it. And by that I mean, if you're slathering it with butter and sour cream, that's definitely adding the calories. Or if you twice bake it, or even worse, if you make it into french fries and fry it, that's where the calories are. Really, potato, not that many calories. You can go out and buy those boxes with dehydrated potatoes. Looks just like this, right? See through them. But why spend that money when it's so easy to make yourself and you can make your own scalloped potatoes without paying the box prices? So how can you dehydrate a potato? Well, of course, I'm using a dehydrator. My favorite dehydrator is the Excalibur dehydrator. Believe me, kids bought me this for Christmas some time ago. I don't get anything from promoting the product, but it is a good dehydrator. But you know what? The smaller dehydrators do a good job too. You just gotta switch your trays more often. It all depends on the fan. And you can dehydrate food and potatoes in your oven, if you can get a low enough temperature, in a toaster oven even, and in a solar oven. So really, everybody should be able to dehydrate potatoes. So maybe it's your first time dehydrating and you wanna try something quick, or maybe you got a great deal on frozen potatoes O'Brien. Um, this has potatoes O'Brien with onions and peppers. And this is so, so easy to dehydrate. You need scissors. Yeah, cut off the top. Okay. And probably before I did that, I should have just pounded it a little because I'm going to separate it. Now we just take our tray and frozen it all. We're just gonna pour them out here. Probably do two trays with this. And just take our hands. You really don't have to take time to thaw them out. You just wanna spread them out. And if some of them are kinda of stuck together, you can always separate them as they dehydrate a little. And this is all there is to it. You got your diced potato. You got some red pepper, some green pepper, and yep, some onions. And then we're just gonna put it in the dehydrator at 125. How easy is that? I've just pulled these out of the dehydrator. It's been about seven hours and they are done. Now I happen to peel my potatoes. Some people don't, some people leave the peels on. Uh, which is easier, but my feeling is I'm buying these in the store. They can have chemicals in the peel, so I'd rather take the peels off. And you'll notice I took off any little eyes I found or any imperfections too. You want to do that, otherwise when you're drying them, that area will turn black. And of course, you want to put them in some cold water while you're doing it so the potatoes don't turn yellow. Cut our potato in half. I'm using a mandolin. You do not have to. You can just slice it as evenly as you can. It just makes it a lot faster using a mandolin. I've used my 
food processor, my KitchenAid, and I haven't been as happy with the results as a mandolin. But you've got to be careful with this. <laughs> Trust me on this. In fact, everybody that has one can probably tell you a story. you got to put this on, okay? You don't want to be doing it like that, barehanded, because all of a sudden you slip, it comes down, and boy, I almost took the end of my thumb off. So use the protection, even though then you don't get to do the very end. Okay, so hopefully I can show this. It's always harder doing something in front of the camera. Let's see. So just slice them back and forth. See underneath? See those nice slices? Throw them in here. Okay. Just nice even strokes. Okay, again. Getting down to the bottom here. Okay, and that's it. So then, you got this much left. And I learned from I'm Still Working. Ah, she had a great channel. And then she found true love, and I've hardly heard from her again. But to save these, we're going to make these into dehydrated diced potatoes. So I'm just going to put them in there. We are left with just lovely, look at those slices. Aren't they nice? Okay. So I'm going to finish slicing up my potatoes. For as long as I have my mandolin out, I'd make some shredded potatoes too. These are great for making a type of scallop potatoes also and to be used in other dishes. Oh, we're using this attachment here. You see the blades? Potato. And we're going to slice it in the middle. Put on our little blades. And now Sometimes it gets caught. It's smooth. Okay, can't get any more. So then you get all these shreds. Here's our shreds in cold water. So let's make some diced potatoes. You know, usually I would use my Vidalia Chop Wizard, but I decided to try this KitchenAid appliance. It was um, under $19 at Tuesday's morning and usually it goes for more. So it looks like it has a little bit bigger capacity and what I liked is this dicing blade was a little bigger. So let's try it out. We have our potato here. Again, peeled, all dicing. Ooh, maybe that could be just a little more there. All little spots removed. And now we want it about the th thickness of the potato dices we want. all up. Try not to cut our fingers. Okay, now here's the appliance. You can have water in here. I just cut a couple potatoes and then put it in the water I have behind. But right, let's put some on here. Can we get that one in too? Yes, okay. There we go. That one. I think that's what all we're going to get out. Whoops. And it, it does seem like it's easy to push down, but I find that the lid doesn't stay on as well. Maybe because this is heavier. So, take off this, so you can see we have all of our slices. And these are a little bigger slices, which what I'm looking for, um, I'm not making O'Brien, this is more for soups, so I'm going to cut up a whole bunch more. I'm putting it all in cold water until I get ready. Now there's also the question, depending on some food, people say, hey, you really don't have to blanch it. Why blanch it before you dehydrate it or before you freeze it? Well, there is some reasons for that, um, for food preservation, but from potatoes, it's mainly because it really looks ucky if you don't <laughs> 
blanch it. Um, it can turn a very blackish, grayish color, and it really looks pretty unappetizing. So, always blanch before you dehydrate. Boiling water, gonna add our slices to it. This water's cold, so we're gonna have to wait until it gets back up to boiling again. Now see the white froth? That's the starch coming out. And you want to make sure that it all comes out like this. Don't want to overcook it because then we'll end up with mush potatoes instead of our potato slices. You want to do this till it's fork tender. These are a little thicker than the potato. So maybe a minute and a half. So when you put your diced potatoes in here, you'd only want about a half a pot full. You don't want to fill it up so they don't have room to jiggle and cook. Do a little fork test. Get one. Okay. Here's a big one. Yep. We're done. Could have cold water waiting and dip it in, but since I'm doing so many, I'm just cooling it off here with the tap water. We just want to stop the cooking. So we want to make sure we're getting it all in. So oh, we'll cool this off and we'll be back. Just gonna lay it out on our tray. And it's good to leave a little space in between. You to take your time laying out your slices because you want them to dry evenly. But aren't those nice slices? Right there. Okay, the shreds have to share some of their space here with the sliced potatoes. And it's nice to get these as separated as you can. That's much harder with something like this. And as they dry, you can always separate them a little bit more. So here's our dices laid out. They kind of look like uh, pineapple chunks. One of the questions I'm asked, if I have a dehydrator, what temperature do I dehydrate the potatoes? Do it according to your dehydrator manual. Mine is at a veggie setting at 125 degrees. And most people say between 125 and 135 degrees. Tray in, and then I'll tray up more until we fill up the dehydrator. Something else you can also do is, I only have five trays, so what happens if you fill up your trays and you still have more sliced potatoes or whatever? I just put them in water and put them in the refrigerator. Then I drain them and I dehydrate them when those trays are empty. As long as potatoes are covered with cold water, they will not turn black. So as you can see, my dehydrator is full. What I'm gonna do with these already blanched shreds, just put them in a dish here. Because I only have five trays and it was 15 pounds of potatoes. And I'm already on my second five trays, so 10 trays have been full. And some people have the larger dehydrators. I think Excalibur also comes with a nine tray or something. But I just don't have space for that. Okay, now we're just gonna fill this with cold water. One of the questions I had when I started dehydrating was, well, what happens if I, it's not done? I want to go to bed. I'm testing it. The stuff really isn't done. Can I just turn it off and then next morning turn it back on and finish dehydrating? Yes, you can. I do that all the time. I do not have a timer on my dehydrator. And if I only think it has a little while left, I am not going to leave it on all night. Okay, the first batch is done. They look like little potato chips, don't they? I don't know if you can see, but they're almost translucent. They're very firm to the touch. A question I also get is, do dehydrated potato slices taste like potato chips? Mm. The answer is, no, they don't. They taste like dried raw potatoes. Now, I suppose if you put some oil on them and some salt, 
They might taste a little bit like kettle chips, but definitely not like potato chips. The shreds got done nice and quick. See, they're really crispy. Now, when you look at this, you might think, hey, this is done. Can you see? It's starting to get like translucent in parts. But let's try biting one open. It is done. One way to see, really open it up. Because the middle might not be done. Hmm. You know what? I'm still thinking this needs just a little longer. I don't think you can see, but there's just a little piece in there. It's a little pliable. I don't think that's done yet. Because if the middle is still just a little potatoey, then it can turn dark and it will spoil your savings. So it's better to go a little longer than you need than not to go far enough. I'm going to put this in just a little longer. One of the questions I get, but what's the storage life of these potato slices? Well, it's at least five years if you properly really make sure they're dehydrated, the slices are dry, and you put them, I put them in a glass jar and vacuum pack, and I keep them downstairs in the dark in the basement where it is a cooler temperature. And I have a video where I'm refrying um, dehydrated potatoes that were four years old and they worked just wonderful. So at least five years if you store them properly. I talked about storing the dehydrated potato slices in jars. You can see here's the slices. This is a quart jar and there's quite a bit of space in it, but that's because I don't want to crowd it. I don't want to crush the slices. And you can see in the shreds, you can get a lot more shreds into a jar. This is a pint jar. And what I do is I use this handy dandy attachment. It goes with my food saver and I bought it online on Amazon. And this is for the large mouth lids and you can also get one for the smaller mouth lids. It just goes over your jar like this. And then you have, for my case, I have a tube that runs from my food saver. I put that tube in here. I put the food saver on and then I press accessory and it makes a heck of a lot of noise and voila take it off and I have a vacuum sealed jar which I can pick it up just from the lids can you see it's really vacuum packed so that's my favorite way to store my dehydrated goods you know if you put it in a baggie um, a rodent can eat through it and that will ruin your storage you can use Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers, but since I'm a canner, I have plenty of jars. And to me, this is the easy way to go. And unlike Mylar bags, these are reusable. I get questions on how do I rehydrate, what I dehydrate, and it depends. You know, the potato slices and the shredded potatoes to me really rehydrate quickly and I pour boiling water on them. The cubes, depending on the size cubes, you want at least a half hour of rehydration. I think it's better to rehydrate food before I put it in super stews um, because it can absorb too much liquid. But you can also rehydrate. You don't have to just use water. You can rehydrate in chicken broth, beef broth, any kind of broth, and that really gives it a little extra flavor. Now, I put this in the microwave, heat it up boiling water. I'm just gonna put some. I probably should add a little more to cover that one. Get some flatter ones. Ouch. And let's see how long it takes. And if you remember, this is the way they were. That's how they crack. So after five minutes, you see how they're getting back, their flexibility? This will actually be pretty, be able to cook it pretty soon. And, oh, something else I should mention. As it rehydrates, it gets whiter in color. Otherwise, it's a little bit of a 
very light golden color. Then I get questions. How do you use your dehydrated potatoes? Well, my favorite way for the potato slices is to just fry them up in the cast iron pan. They get really crispy and a little soft in the inside. They really, really taste good. But of course, you can also make scalloped potatoes with them in other dishes. And my shredded um, potatoes, hash browns, right? But you can also make a scalloped or cheesy dish with the shredded ones. And I don't have any of my cubes yet. They're still in the dehydrator. But I use those basically in soups and stews. So anywhere you would use a sliced potato, a shredded potato, or a cubed potato, you can use a dehydrated one instead. Remember in the beginning that 15 pound bag of russet potatoes? Well, here it is dehydrated. We have four quarts loosely packed with the potato slices and one quart with potato dices and one pint with the shredded potatoes and one lone potato left over. And that's it for 15 pounds of potatoes. Well, I hope you learned how to dehydrate a potato. Really not hard at all. And the potato slices are so versatile. I think once you do it, you'll be hooked. And if you have any questions, please put them below. Or if there's anything you do differently when you dehydrate potatoes, I'd love to hear it. This is Prepper Potpourri saying, please subscribe, share the knowledge, thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you.